What's up everybody, Dr. Ray, and I wanna talk about what an instructional designer does. What do we do? I've been in this field for 20 years and it has changed um, what we do. And so let me talk about like my currently what I'm doing is I'm working on projects for both government and corporate. We've got a team of instructional designers working on those projects. Um, I'm also meeting with companies all the time and putting students in internships, observing the students in those internships, seeing what those students do during the internships, and then sending them out to work at these companies. So let's talk about like what instructional designers do. Like, what do you really do? Like, what are your tasks like? I don't want to go through like day to day because day to day it's going to change for you all the time, but I can give you like a pretty general overview of what it's like. And this kind of differs. First of all, it's going to differ by every single company. Every single company has their own like what you do, like are you working from home, are you working in the office, and stuff like that. Um, and what project you're on dictates a lot too. Like sometimes I'm with a client who like needs to meet all the time, and sometimes I'm with a client where like we don't really meet hardly ever. So there's lots of variation in what you're gonna do. But there is a big difference between higher ed and corporate instructional designers. And when I say corporate, I do include like healthcare, government, um, nonprofit in there, even though all of them are slightly different and a lot of them have different requirements, what they look for in candidates and stuff like that. Um, the tasks are pretty similar. So I kind of lumped them all together. So we're going to talk about some of the differences between higher ed and corporate. Let's start out with higher ed. So higher ed IDs, what are you doing? So in higher ed ID, I see our, so we have a full instructional design team at my university. I'm going to talk a lot about what they do. So they do a few different things. They really have three different roles that I see them fulfilling at my university. So the instructional designers at my university, the first thing that I see them doing is designing e-learning training. This is very similar to corporate. but they're designing a lot of e-learning training. Like let's say we're implementing a new policy at my university or like our COVID policy or whatever it happens to be. They're designing like some kind of e-learning content and sending that out to like all faculty and students saying here, go through this training, blah, blah, blah. All right, you know, take the test and stuff and show that you passed. So they're doing that. They're doing a lot of the e-learning development. But in addition to that, the instruct, and this is, this is something that really differs a lot from corporate, is that the instructional designers at my university are also trainers. We do a lot, I, there's a lot in higher ed of face-to-face -face training. There's a lot of opportunity for them to get up in front of an audience because like maybe they've developed that e-learning on like the new piece of software, but a lot of faculty just don't want to take the e-learning and they want a face-to-face -face course. So the, the instructional designers are teaching a lot all the time, literally weekly they're teaching, like they're teaching a lot of courses to faculty, like a lot of just things about the university, um, a lot about the tech, safety online, how to do this, how to do that. It's, con it's consistently changing. So they're always doing new types of training. So there's a lot of stand up face-to-face -face training. So the instructional designers in higher ed are doing a lot of face-to-face -face training, which is cool. The other job, and this differs from corporate as well, is the instructional designers are working with faculty a lot to either improve faculty courses or to put the faculty courses online. So like every time a faculty member teaches a new course, remember faculty have never been trained how to teach besides in the College of Education. And I'm an instructional designer, so I don't really have, I, I do have them actually go through my courses sometimes to give me feedback. But like someone who's not an instructional designer, the instructional designers will sit down with that faculty and say, here's a bunch of strategies to make your course like 10 times better. Or let's say the faculty member is taking a face-to-face -face course and putting it online. They, here's all the strategies that make a face-to-face -face course good. Like here's, here are strategies to make people like go through this online. Here's what makes it, will make it better and stuff like this. So they help them with that transition process. So that's the stuff that higher ed does. And I feel like the job in higher ed is maybe a little more variable in what you do. Like there's more different tasks. Um, then let's move over to corporate. So, and as I said, this all differs by what company you're at. So someone's gonna be like, well, I'm at company X and we do it differently. Yeah, of course you do. Every company is different. But in general, most of the training that my company is doing, and in fact, the only time we've ever done training that's not that the only time we've done training that is face-to-face -face or like traditional course has not been corporate. It's always been either deep in the government or higher ed. So we aren't doing anything corporate-wise. It isn't just simply e-learning. So most 
of what you're doing as an instructional designer in corporate right now is, is developing e-learning courses. A, because it saves companies time, and it's just the trend. It's what we're doing, especially within the light of COVID. That's what a lot of instructional designers are doing day to day in corporate is developing e-learning. Um, so let's talk about what that means and what you're really doing. So a lot of times we expect the instructional designer to be like kind of like the one size fits all, like, you know, you're the person who does it. Like when I first started in the field, we had like a graphics person and like a development person or programmer. And now we kind of expect you to do all of that. So usually as an instructional designer in corporate, in general, the job for you is going to be to work with some kind of subject matter expert. Um, maybe you're doing some analysis, like coming up with a problem and helping a client determine their needs or if training's a solution or not. Um, but you're going to come up with some kind of problem and with a, your client or you're at a company, you're going to work with your subject matter expert. They're going to give you a bunch of content and that content can be from their head. It can be from like an encyclopedia type documents or different presentations. And they're going to say, organize this content for me. So the first step is you're going to organize it. And you're going to say, here's how it makes sense to be in a cor course. You're going to determine what kind of software needs to be used to develop it. Um, that will differ by company. There are some very standard instructional design software that people use, but sometimes that doesn't work and sometimes you have to program it, just depending on their needs. Um, you're going to figure out the type of software. You're going to have the course organized. You're going to start to develop it. When you're developing it, you're going to have these and please go and look at the instructional design process because I'm saying this in really like high le highest level possible right now. Um, Cause there's a lot more depth into what I'm saying right now, but you're gonna come up with strategies so that the learners actually learn this content. So you're gonna make it look good when you're developing it and you're gonna make the learners learn it. Like I'm not just gonna sit there. I might as, if you're just, if you're not adding the learning component I might as well just read it out of the encyclopedia, right? So you're gonna make me learn it. When I'm going through it. So you're going to add this learning component and you're probably going to develop some kind of assessment and then you're going to deliver that to the client and you're going to develop the next one or maybe you're working on like five at the same time. You're going to have a bunch of meetings in between there with like your subject matter experts and your managers. Maybe you're on a team of other people. Maybe you have like a narrator doing some stuff. Maybe you have like a video person doing some stuff. Maybe you're just doing all of that. It's going to kind of vary but that's typically what you're going to be doing. Um, that's, that's the typical like outlook of instructional designers. Good salary, salary goes up, pretty good working hours. There's gonna be times when like you're, you have gotta, especially like in government, we had a lot of these huge like mandatory like federal deadline where like you were gonna work like 80 hours a week for like four weeks in a row to get something done. But then you get like the break after that and stuff. You know, there's lots of variation there where you have like the stressful times and the not stressful times and lots of variation in the work environment. But that's typically what you're gonna be doing as the instructional designer. Trying to make this, you know, very like in layman terms, what do you do as an IT? But that's what you do. We're doing a lot of curriculum development. You're working with a lot of tech. Um, you got to be familiar with the software. You got to be familiar with the LMS, how to implement things, how to put things in, in the software and stuff like that. You got to be able to talk to the, the tech people at the company so that they understand. I work with, a, I'm, I'm a lot of times I'm the in-between between the manager or the person who implemented the project and they know nothing about ID or tech. And then I'm working with like a really big tech person who like their job is like networking. And I have to be the in-between between them and talk to each of them. So you've got to be able to do that. And you learn the tech terminology and you learn how to do it as time goes on. But that's the basic like, what does an instructional designer do? That's what we're doing. And, and that's, this is a very generic response. Please go read the process about like all the things, potential things an ID can do, because it does change. Um, but in general, that's what we're doing. So hope you enjoy. Later, everybody.